everybody. panelists on with me. Where the heck are they all? Stay and I will never say. That's a good way for all you guys never to come back. One thing I'm definitely not good at. Let me see who's on the... Oh, there's somebody. Hi, Tracy. Cam's there. Just has a picture on yet. Hey, Drake, can you let Brian Moses in? Excuse me? I, I tried, but it was um, declined to pr oh. be promoted. So I don't know. Hmm. Nope, declined to be promoted to panelist. All right, let me send him a text. Right. Craig's trying to, Craig said he's trying to get into. Yep, I got Craig. Let me text Brian. Do, 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 do. Hey, Mitch, I got to right. tell you, since you've been getting those lessons, I definitely think you've gotten better through the past <laughs> couple of years of me listening and watching you. You've definitely gotten better. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's been a lot of work. <laughs> you hey, Michael uh, Guida sends his regards. We were uh, at the little Mediterranean cafe in the middle of South Philly doing double espressos about an hour ago. Oh, that's awesome. He's, he's helped me out a lot. Um, yeah, nah, he mentioned in fact, that. Jen, Jen's heading back up on Sunday. Oh, cool. Um, well, yeah. So really the good. thing not to do is do two double espressos right before this, because now I'm <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> let me see what Brian is. Uh, yeah. So he's declining it, Dre. Yeah. Every time I go to um, add him as a panelist, it says Brian Moses declined to be promoted to panelist. I'm not sure what's going on there. Sending him a text. Tracy, what cool place are you at? Uh, so I am in an area of Beverly Hills called Cannon Park. Can you see? So I'm going to sit here and have the morning call. So I'm right at, uh, I don't know, I'm off of uh, Beverly Drive in Cannon. And behind me is the Mayborn Hotel. Oh, nice. They don't yeah. let Philly boys in Beverly Hills. Oh, I'll <laughs> let you in. I'll let you in. I know everybody. <laughs> they don't let Philly boys anywhere, Craig. You know that. <laughs> See, I, I, I have to tell you though, we we spent. Um, I was Jeanette was up there for a week, and you know we we're in uh, May's Landing, Craig. If you know where that is. Yep. Yep. Um, and you know I forgot how nice people are in the north. I mean, everybody was so nice everywhere we went. Being sarcastic. Yeah. No, no, I'm serious. I was like blown away because I I always look at you know you guys are a bunch of jerks, and I was like, wow, you guys are actually not that bad. <laughs> um, I sent Brian a text, so maybe Jay, you can try him another time, but. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Um, anyway, so today we are talking about door knocking. Um, and door knocking is definitely an art. Uh, I've done some of it. I'm not the pro on it, but I do have some thoughts on it. But we'll get to me at some point. But, you know, let's let's just start with some cheese cheesesteaks up in Philly and start with Craig on door knocking. Hey, um, yeah. I don't door knock, but I know a bunch of my guys do. Because I've done, I just don't have the dime to, to be honest with you, get out there and just hit the doors. I can tell you the biggest thing that they've been doing is going around listings that other agents, I know, going to piss some people off. I call it the PO barometer. But remember this number, we talk about 83% of the agents don't do it. So what they're doing is if they don't have listings, they're picking markets and then they're door knocking to educate what's going on in the marketplace. Um, two of my girls just 
picked up uh, a listing last week doing it, and they've only done it for three weeks because the weather's breaking. Another one just picked up four. So it's doing what the other agents aren't doing around their listings. So if you don't have listings, go do them. Doesn't matter the company, doesn't matter. You're doing a market update. Um, and you're mainly just giving a service and saying, you know, as as we've said is, hey, by the way, did you know this house sold up the street? And did you know it sold over market price? And if you become informational, they'll want that. And then what they've been doing is saying, would you be curious to give me your email and I'll put you on my home beat or home bot? So now they've got these people that are getting market updates just automatically through their home beat and home bot uh, system. So that is, that's, that's what I know about the door knocking, but I want to add a twist if I can. Are you open for a twist? Sure. Instead of doing a door knocking where some of them, you can't get to them because I know like where we're in a luxury area where I'm, where I do a lot of my business, you can't get to some of the house because of gated and all that stuff. One of the, the girls, they have a group of them on in our in our organization that are doing calls from nine o'clock to twelve o'clock. They're using Mojo Dial, Mojo Sells, and for two hundred and fifty dollars a month, they're getting these the three dialers and they're, they're dialing. These girls are doing fifteen hours a week, and they're picking up a ton of stuff off of mojosells.com by setting up with a white with a white number, which means it'll never get reported as spam. They allocate whether it's FISBOs or expireds or, or off market, and it's working. So instead of going out to some of the doors, they're just rattling calls and having a dialer do it and then connecting them. So just adding to something different, if you don't think you can door knock in your area, you can pinpoint areas. It's called mojosell.com. So just added something different. Cool. Yeah, Mojo Dials are really good. Uh, we used to use them when we had our RSA department in our brokerage, and um, they're a, a, up to a three-line dialer, which is nice. It helps you uh, go. And they do scrub the list. Feed. So if you are into cold calling and stuff like that, um, it is a good list. Uh, I personally didn't do cold calling. I like door knocking, uh, but I'm very specific on where I door, door knock and how I door knock, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, Mr. Ross, what's up, buddy? <clears throat> Hey everybody, how are you? Um, so door knocking was an integral part of growing my team. So I took a, a lot of young agents out and I had some listings in a uh, entry level Palm Springs, anywhere from 800 to a million one. And we went door knocking because I already had several listings in the area, just kind of coaching people up on it. So we'd split up in pairs. We took about six people and then we divided the uh, complex into thirds and we were going to systematically hit a um, hundred doors each in a matter of a, of a month span. So we were trying to do uh, two walks a week before the open houses on the weekends, inviting people to those. And uh, this is a classic idea of uh, any kind of uh, attention is positive attention. And I was walking with a guy who had tattoos on his hands and his fingers and uh, one of the people that we knocked on their door, they they were like super offended that we knocked on their door. I totally get it. So they hopped on um, their uh, next door channel, uh, their neighborhood uh, like site and started complaining about us. And everyone in the neighborhood banded together to, to defend my buddy and what we were doing because they all loved us. And we ended up pulling eight more listings that month in that area just because we were out there working. So just gaining attention you're going to get the door slammed in your face you're going to get adversity there's going to be negative connotation with knocking on somebody's door at maybe they're a, a night worker a day sleeper so there's going to be negatives we can't always predict what's going to happen but what we can predict is that we are eliminating that phone call we're eliminating the internet lead we are having a face-to-face -face meeting in that moment and we need to be prepared to give our ad value and give what we can uh offer these people in the real estate market, whether it be a market update, whether it be listing their home, you should have a full bag of tricks with you when you're walking around and great material to hand out. So you stand out and you're remembered and, um, and people can go bat for you when uh, the neighborhood isn't being so friendly to you. So for me with young agents, that was a great way. Face-to-face -face meetings every time you're out there, even if you get 99 doors slammed in your face and you had one appointment, that's a huge win. That that's a win for the day. 
So it's a numbers game. You got to play it, uh, but it's free and you can really build a business on that. Uh, and pairing them with open houses is an excellent way because then it's a warm knock. It's an invitation. It's uh, it's not a, hey, it's me. What's up? It, there's actually something behind it. There's substance. So door knocking can be integral. Uh, it offers uh, a free basis, free to have face-to-face meetings. And uh, I think it's a great way to start building a business. Mitch, you're muted. I did that on purpose just to see you catch me. Um, see if anybody's actually listening to me. So it's funny because, you know, um, I, I had this girl that I trained before on, on door knocking and, and she built her entire business on it. And she had zero fear. And I trained the same. She was a brand new agent, came in and just kicked butt. And I couldn't get any of my experienced agents to do it who weren't selling a lot of property. But they were so terrified of getting the door slammed in their face. She goes, I, she goes, nobody ever slammed the door in my face. She goes, some people say I'm just not interested and close the door nicely. <laughs> but uh, anyways, Tracy, let's see what you guys say. Go. Okay. So my twist on door knocking is I call it intentional door knocking. So, and I find that with, um, with Red X, which you just uh, talked about Mojo Sales. It's another one of those um, uh, products that you can find out expires and you can you can put in the uh, filters that you want, you know, area, cities, et cetera. So number one, I think uh, organization starts at least the night before. You know, you, you have to know who it is you are targeting. And so I usually will go on to the MLS first thing in the morning go through, see uh, what all the new listings are, and then see what all the new expireds are. I then uh, put that list together. I put it into Mojo, excuse me, into uh, Red X, and I get the phone numbers for those cities. Now, what happens with the MLS out here is that they usually don't give you those, that new information doesn't go up until the, the following 24 hours. So maybe you want to do some sort of skip tracing to get phone numbers. But if there's like five listings that I really want to go after, those will be the five that I take my materials and door knock and, you know, put my information in front of them. And I'm, you know, I'm on board with, I, I've never had a door slammed on my face. You know, um, if nothing, we just start a casual conversation, even if they're not interested. And they'll say, you know, sure was nice talking to you. I'm like, you too, you know, so um, I'm all about doing it with intention um, and uh, targeting certain people that I want to target. And if they're not there, um, then I leave my materials in a nice package that I have put together. And then I follow up with another call, with email, you know, the entire process that I do. So uh, that's how I uh, implement uh, door knocking. And um, I don't know. Uh, I just think it starts with the night before or two nights before. Uh, I set up a binder now, right? Hole punch. I put all of them in the binder. And the other thing I would like to suggest, especially to newer agents and maybe some of those who are experienced, go back six months, go back one year. No one's called them. So if you're afraid to, you know, call that new expire where there's a, you know, 50 of us or 20 of us or however many of us calling that same number, you know, call someone from three, six, 12 months back. Hey, I noticed that your property, you know, expired, you know, back in November, you know, what is your plan? You know, where were you planning on heading if you would have sold, you know, but no one's pounding phones right now. So if you want to start up easy, maybe go back three months just to get your feet wet um, or start off with a price point that you're not so fearful of. But I, I don't think you should be fearful of any price point um, as long as you've got the confidence. So that's sort of my take. Um, I, I really like I've heard so far um, as far as the other, uh, what other uh, folks are doing. So that's sort of my take on it being intentional. Yeah. And it, and it, it, it's key. And I teach that a lot, Tracy is you got to be intentional because of that. You're, you know, you look like Ross, you get slammed the door in the face and your face gets indented and, you know, <laughs> uh, um, all right, let's go to uh, Mr. Cam's note. Hey guys, good morning, everybody. 
Wow. So uh, I'll be honest, I haven't done door knocking since I got hit by that car here, what, about two years ago and broke my foot because walking sucks. But when you do door knocking, I will do what the, the training that I do on it. And it, it's very effective, you guys. And I'm really excited to see actually Chris down there today here today. Uh, I know he's going to have some big nuggets. But door knocking, you guys, the reason it works is because everyone here on this panel or most of us here on this panel aren't doing it, right? You're putting yourself in front of people. You're getting yourself out there in a way that most people aren't doing it. And it's completely free. That's one of the best things about it is that you are not having to spend a dime. And I, I just spent $400 on a mailer to a community. You're not having to spend a dime to talk with people and get a hold of people, right? <laughs> so um, as Tracy was saying, and Tracy, it's great to see you here too. Door knock with intention. You know, pick a neighborhood that you're going to be really targeting and not just with your door knocking but with multiple steps right this is going to be a series that you're going to be trying to connect you're building a brand you guys you're really actually trying to to create influence in an area so make sure that before you even decide to go door knocking you really spend some time you know picking that neighborhood or picking the areas that you want to to target um when you do door knock i seen someone had a question when you do door knock, I prefer door knocking at like 4, 5, 6 p.m. at the end of the day. Middle of the day, literally, I have had zero success with anyone answering when I was doing it. So door knock at the end of the day, um, that was very successful for me. And then always make sure you have a reason that you're stopping by. As I think Ross said, you're not the hey guy, right? No, make sure you have a reason that you're stopping by. It can be you just listed, just sold, um, yeah, a new listing came up, you're wanting to give market updates. It doesn't matter what it is, you guys but you have to have intent so that when they open the door, you have something in value to talk with them about. And then obviously when you have someone and they open the door, make sure you're smiling, get your face in order, but you get ready. You know, you're talking with someone, you need to be ready to talk with them. And I always lead off the conversation with a compliment. I love the sign. I love your car. Uh, I did this the other day with a buyer that ended up double siding one of our listings. Oh my God. I love your Corvette, that yellow. It's, it's my favorite. It actually is like my trim color in my car. And you know what the guy said to me? He went, yeah, you know, I don't know why they stopped making this color. It's my, uh, it's the best yellow they've ever made. And it's, it's my favorite. I know. I love it too. Like I said, it's in my car. And instantly he was my client because we bonded over his color of his car. You guys, simple things make huge results. So make sure when you open that door, you're smiling, you're on your game, and then you compliment them. Um, have a reason to, to, you know, be there. If they don't open the door, you guys, you need something to leave. You need to have something to leave there that has multiple USPs. What are USPs? Those are our unique selling propositions, you guys. We've talked about those extensively. Uh, you can go back to some of our other amazing classes to talk about those. But those are going to be things like our, you know, um, off-market, no-show sold program. Well, what's that? Well, now you got to go to the link that I'm giving you here or, you know, reach out to me and I'd love to share it with you or 90 day action plan, whatever you guys want to create to make sure you are unique. Those things that you drop off have to have all of those listed because only it takes one, you guys, maybe it's off market. Maybe it's a, um, you know, special program that you're doing for social media or, or whatever it is. If it's something that you find value in or you think they will find value in, it only has to tick one of those boxes and they reach out to you. Um, obviously as you get the conversation going, it's going to be, obviously you have to, you have to be, be personal guys. Be, don't just try to fail down, you know, talk to them. How's everything going? Love your house. I love this. We just had this property we listed or we just sold it. Um, you'll have a, a flow going. One of the things I always like to offer to try to get their contact info, because obviously that, that typically is the goal is our market update newsletter, right? We have a market update newsletter. It's super simple to add people into, and it's already going on. So if you do a market newsletter, you know, offer that to them um, that, you know, we'd love to send it to you. It keeps you up to date. Uh, Craig, you said this for the gated communities. I'm going to drop a huge nugget here for you guys. <clears throat> Call the HOA associations and see if you can set up a coffee in the morning at their, their community center or their, you know, their uh, pool center or whatever it may be. You guys, you can do small events in these communities that you're sponsoring and they will let you in. Now, obviously you can't be then trying to, sell everyone at the thing it's got to be for the community they got to see it as positive but it has worked for us and it's something i recommend everyone do if you are targeting a specific community like we said earlier and it's a gated community and you don't live in it right that's obviously if you live in a gated community you pretty much have to target your gated community if you don't 
then obviously it's great to uh, do events. The, uh, the open houses, obviously, those are a huge reason to door knock. Just listed, just sold. And then uh, the last thing I want to leave you guys with, I know, Tracy, you were talking about Red X. Um, Craig, you were talking about Mojo. I have one that's uh, even a little bit better priced, you guys. It's called Espresso Agent. And I believe right now they give out, uh, for all of us here on the call and everyone at the tribe, they give a free six months of past listings. So past expired, past for sale by owners, all of that. Because Tracy, like you said, calling past expireds one, guys, they're a lot less aggressive. They're not being bombarded. Um, it's great practice. A lot of them are going to say, hey, we're just not going to sell anymore. But you are going to find people that are still interested. You know, those are the people that when you originally called them, they said, no, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just going to take it off the market and, and think about it for a bit. Well, they've thought about it. It's time to sell their home. And now you're going to be reaching out to them, making that contact, and then obviously getting the listing and getting it sold. So that's all I got, guys. Espresso Agent, though, it's a great system. It's just like Mojo. It's just like Red X, uh, just a little bit less expensive. And uh, I'm excited to hear what what, uh, what you have to say, Mitch, because I know you did a lot of door knocking training. Yep, cool. Um, and, and, and Ken, put that link in the uh, chat there for them, for the espresso there. Um, awesome, sure. awesome. Mr. Lawson, um, have you guys thought out yet? Are you guys still cold up there? Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're still cold, but I'm going to start out with <clears throat> uh, a little trick <clears throat> that I learned really fast. You know, the best time to door knock in Park City, Utah is when it's snowing. You know why? Because the people invite you into their house, right? If you door knock, if you're in Phoenix and it's 110 degrees, <clears throat> you probably don't want to door knock. But if you do, they will invite you in. Good. Okay, yeah. so think opposite what everybody else thinks and that's how you win. So a couple things um, that I... Um, I did early in my career and I did a lot in the areas that I farm specifically like Jeremy Ranch and so on. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, is that I wanted to dominate that area. So I just door knocked it a lot. Um, and if you do it on a consistent basis, people will get to know you. But I can tell you one thing, it's way more successful. You've heard it from this panel three times already. Be intentional. Right, Tarsi? And if you're intentional, what does that mean? Well, if you when you get an open house, what you do is you 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 door knock on Thursday, and I agree at the time, don't door knock in the middle of the day. You're not going to get anybody at, you know, I say door knock at the end of the day. And then you say, you know, hey, Mitch, uh, I just want to let you know, I just listed one, two, three Main Street down the road. It's three bedroom, two bath, whatever. And we're having an open house on Saturday. And I'm just letting all the neighbors know just in case maybe you know somebody that you'd like to pick as a neighbor. So do you know anybody that you might be in or that might be interested in the home? And he usually says no, but, and then I say, and by the way, the open house is from 12 to five, but I'm doing a special open house just from one to two o'clock just for my friends, clients, and the neighbors, that's that's a private open house. So could you make it at, at you know that time or whatever? So those are some things that I've done that are really well, that help really well. I also want to say I loved it when Ross said you'd knock 99 doors and they say no and you get one. I'm talking to my agents right now. Wake up every morning and let's all see how many times we can fail, right? Let's make phone calls and see if people hang up on us. They hardly ever do. Let's see how many people say, "Not no, I'm not interested or not now. So when you door knock, you know, you, you, if you have the, the numbers mentality, right? If I just knock doors, I'm going to get something. I think it's important. Um, the other thing is, it, you guys, you know about Land Glide. It, raise your hand if you know about Land Glide. No? Okay. So Land Glide is something that you got to get. It's $100 a year. And basically, when what it does is it, it you just say, where am I at? And it's super good for lots of things. You want... So you're walking a person's property. It'll show you where the corners of the lot are. If you're in the house, it'll show you where you are. 
But the best thing is, is you can use it as a prospecting tool. And not only that, it gives you the tax records, the names. So I'm walking down the road in the first house I'm on, it it's Mitch's. So I say, Mr. Reback, I, you know, as a professional agent, and this, this is, I, I focus on our area, right? It's not their area, it's our neighborhood, right? And you just go down and you know all the neighbor's houses uh, are their names, right? Because it's right there. The other thing you can do is when you're door knocking, you can say, you know, drop a couple of the names of the people I got to know, I just did this through tax records and now there's an app on my phone. You can pull it up before you go knock every single door, right? And I used to be very intentional and say, hey, but I didn't list one, two, three Main Street. Hey, Mitch, I just list the Smith's house four doors down. Do you know them, right? And then I, you can make it very personal. Um, <clears throat> Door knocking, like you said, it's free. Um, and I found that just don't knock any old neighborhood. Knock the neighborhoods that you have a listing, you made sales. There's, if you're, you know, a new listing, if if there's a new listing in at, at EXP or in your office, if you're not at EXP, I like to start with that. And, and the reason why is then I say, we have a listing. Right. I'm not saying it's my listing. We have a listing at EXP at, you know, down and around the corner or whatever. Um, the other time to be super hyper focused is door knocking expireds. So I used to call expireds three times in the day. And if I don't reach them and then what I do is I would go to FedEx I'd pick up a whole bunch of FedEx envelopes. I ordered an account with them and then they mail you a thousand um, of the, uh, you know, the, the shipping sheets. And it says, you know, David Lawson, Lawson team address, Park City, right? And it has, you know, and, it, and then what I do is I actually um, take that FedEx envelope and I write, Mitch Reback, 123 Main Street, Park City, Utah. And then I put my listing presentation, my just the facts, and my, as as uh, Cam would say, my USBs, right? I would put that in the envelope. And on my way home, I'd go and I'd knock on the door. If they're there, um, sometimes I, I tested it out. Sometimes I would just leave it on the doorstep and not even mention it. Sometimes I would actually hand it to them. But the thing is, is if it's an if it's an expired and they end up with it. Now, this was brilliant because when I was doing this, there was no such thing as same day delivery. Right. But they're like, wow, how did he do that? Right. Um, and then. Um, uh, and then, of course, you have to practice and, and role play what you say. I always say you want a door door knock. You have two choices in we're in a skills based business. Say yes or yes. Right. So you can knock five times or three times as many doors or you can practice your skill and get good at what you say. Right. Mitch, um, would do you would you you know, who do you know that might want to be one of your neighbors? Nobody. Nobody, thanks for taking the time to think about that. I really appreciate it. Would it, um, have you ever, or do you know anybody in the neighborhood or that would maybe consider that might be moving, right? You know, you just have your scripts and you know how to say it and present it. Um, I also door knocked Fizbo's. And my script with, and, and essentially I would bring the same thing with them. Now, I don't want to get into a FISBO training, but I would knock on the door and just say, hey, I was in the neighborhood because I knocked in the door. I was in the neighborhood, right? Because I drove to the neighborhood to knock on the door. But it sounds like I'm in the neighborhood. And so I just thought I would stop by and talk to them, right? You want to know the golden nugget, the one that gets the most um, exposure? 
it's me calling, knocking on the door. Hey, Mitch, man, I hate to bother you, but I've got this client. He's from Boca Raton. He, it's the Rebeck family. And um, they've been looking in the Jeremy Ranch area. And, and we've shown him all of the properties and there's nothing on the market that he likes. So I'm, this is just a crazy thought, but I, I got to find my client, um, you know, a property. So do you know anybody in the neighborhood that might be interested in selling and then shut up? And I always, you guys know me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? You ask the question and you shut up for seven seconds and what you do is you allow them to think if they know anybody the other thing is is and if they say no you just say man uh, thank you so much for just answering the door and you know i love to go way 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 out of my way to help my clients and even though you don't know anybody um it may it, it means a lot to me and so what am i doing i'm not bragging that i'm knocking on doors i'm not doing that but i'm and the, then i he, i shut the door and then what do you think mitch wow he's knocking doors he has a buyer by the way do not i, I have a rule on my team i say if you tell somebody you have a buyer um and you don't that i could you could consider that real estate malpractice okay so if I call, if I knock on Mitch's door and I say, Mitch, I have a buyer, da, da, da. No, I have the Reback family. It's Mitch and his wife and their two kids. And they're from Boca Raton, Florida and all that. And all of a sudden, then it's a real person. The conversion rate when you actually tell them about that person is unbelievable. So, okay. um. So that's all I prepared. Thanks, everybody. That's awesome. So you're stereotyping me because I'm Jewish and I must live in Boca Raton, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know how you are. So you you Park City people. Uh, uh, Chris, what do you got, bud? What's up, guys? Um, yeah, it's funny that, uh, that Dave ended with that because I was exactly um, one of the things I was going to talk about. That's actually how I sold my first house ever. Um, an actual sale was because I had a, a Zillow lead client, you know, this is going back probably eight years in New York and he put a house under contract, but he was a Zillow junkie. So every night he's on Zillow looking at other houses and then he would say, oh, I found this other house I like better. Let me go look at that one. We'd show him that he canceled the first contract, go to contract on the second one. Well, he did that three times to me. And finally, I just put him in the car. We had become good friends at that point. And I put him in the car. I drove him into the neighborhood where he wanted to be and just said, which house do you want to live in? And of course, you know, the first reaction is, well, I don't know what's for sale. It's America. Everything's for sale. So he literally pointed to a house that was relatively new construction. I pulled into the driveway. I cracked the window like he was a dog. And I went up and I knocked on the guy's door, handed him my card, told him the story. The guy laughed and he's like, holy shit, this is crazy. My wife and I just decided last night that we wanted to put the house on the market and start interviewing agents. I was like, interview's over. Can we come see it? So he's like, yeah, absolutely. Double ended it in the guy's kitchen that day. So exactly what Dave was talking about, you know, guys, everything is going to get, I don't, nobody knows exactly how this NAR settlement's going to shake out, but it's definitely going to complicate things, even if it doesn't overly change the business practice. So one of the best things you can do as you're getting, you know, buyer leads and that's becoming more difficult, you can always leverage that to go and either try and match them with a seller who's not on the market or create listing leads for yourself that way. And, you know, like Tracy was saying, the follow-up becomes so critical. You have to do this intentionally. You're not just getting a sheet and going around and knocking the neighborhood once and introducing yourself and be like, oh, they're going to call me because they will never call you. So if you then, you know, take those people, write down your conversations that you've had with them, you know, put it into your CRM, your spreadsheet, whatever it is that you're using to get organized and then systematically follow up with those people and circle back with them every single time where you have another buyer that's their house could meet those criteria 
Go back and engage with them again. Once you have the contact info, you don't necessarily have to knock on the door. You can call, you can email or whatever it is. Um, but that's something that you are going to be doing then in perpetuity. And maybe it's five years later that that person says, you know, hey, we're ready to sell now. And you've been the guy who's been the total pain in the ass, you know, reaching out to me every three months, six months, whatever it is, for five years. And, you know, that's how your, your pipeline stays perpetually full. So whenever, you know, when you're getting these buyer leads now, don't just say, oh, there's nothing on the market. You know what I mean? Or I can't find them anything because you just put them on a drip campaign and that's it. This is one of the best ways and one of the most cost, true monetary cost, um, the most efficient ways of doing this, just like Cam said, like, yeah, it's free. Does it take time? Absolutely. But for some people, ask yourselves, what the hell else do I have to do? You know what I mean? If you're sitting around wondering, and if you're doing a social media post once a day, that's a selfie, you know what I mean, with you in front of your salad, and uh, you think that that's going to translate to people who wanting to buy houses with you, it's not. This is one of the best ways to cut through all the white noise and actually get in front of people and be memorable to them. And and just like Dave said, don't lie. You know what I mean? Don't make up clients, but you all have people in your pipeline that are right now essentially dead leads. They might not even be communicating with you anymore. But you can say, hey, I spoke to a buyer recently and they looked at everything on the market and didn't like anything or nothing met their criteria, whatever it is. Have you ever considered selling? And then just go into your script from there. But it's a great way to leverage, you know, seemingly dead leads that are just sitting in your database right now. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Randy, have you done, yep. have you done door knocking? Have you done door knocking before? <laughs> oh yeah yeah so you know i my spin is gonna be around that investor kind of uh avatar right so here's why you know i that's that's where i come from right i was an investor first realtor second so one of the things i always did when i was listing one of our investor flips is i would door knock the neighborhood uh when we would buy the property i would door knock the area closest to us to let the people know hey by the way you're probably curious who bought this house it's us Right. And I just want to let you know, because in that case, I was also going to be the realtor listing it. Right. So that's that was my intention is to also work that into my conversation. But I'll tell you how. Right. So because what happens when a flipper buys a home, it's usually the ugliest home on the block and people are nosy. They want to know, like, who owns this thing? This thing has just been a, annoying. It's been ugly to look at. So you're like the guy that shows up like, hey, I'm actually representing this company that bought the property. Uh, in that case, I was. A partner in it so it was even easier but you don't have to be a partner in the flipping company to do what i'm about to tell you if you're the realtor and you can really create relationships with investors you can ask like hey can i just go knock the neighborhood and see if i can find more deals for you investor right you gotta you gotta ask you gotta say and ask what what's in it for them why would they let you leverage their flip for you to go door knock the neighborhood well, if I'm speaking to that investor, but like I, I would love to see if I could get you more flip opportunities and maybe find you a buyer from this neighborhood. Is that are you open to me doing that? So literally, you would go and door knock the area, and you would ask, like, tell the people whoever opens the door, like, hey, by the way, I just want to let you know, one, two, three Main Street. It was this company that bought it. They're gonna make this home a beautiful, beautiful place, right? It's gonna it's gonna be the nicest thing on the block. Uh, and just want to let you know if there's any issues, anything, any noise, any disturbance to the area and neighborhood, please let me know. And I will absolutely let the owners know so they could take care of it. So now first you come off as like the savior of the neighborhood that you don't want to disturb the, the area, right? Which is what people want, right? If they're living next to this property that's going to be renovated and there's a high chance contractors could create and disturb the neighborhood, right? From parking all over the place to who knows, leaving mess in front of the house. So it's a real thing, right? So you can be like, look, I'm an extension of the company. Feel free to call me. I'll make sure I get on the right, you know, get to the right person to get this cleaned up if there's any issues at all. And I also want to let you know, since I'm here, 
is if you have any friends or family that are thinking about moving into the neighborhood, like, let me know, right? Because this would be a great opportunity. This place will be fully renovated. Uh, and then lastly, if you know anyone that's planning on selling, they might want to wait until we get this place on the market because we're going to set the next high benchmark for this area, right? Because like I said, this will be a fully renovated home. So if you know anyone that's considering selling, they might want to wait a few weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Because A, we're going to give them the, the supporting, doc, uh, supporting com comparable and we might actually have leftover buyers that we can ship right to them. So if you know anybody like that, here is my card. So I'm not asking them anything about Oh, are you planning on moving? Are you planning on selling? Are you, you it, it's all third person conversation. Like I, I, do you know anybody, right? That's it. And that script is very non-threatening when you're doing door knocking, right? And it worked very, very well. So if you want to go the extra step, if you're already going to do this, actually create a flyer about what I just said, because a lot of people are not going to open the door, right? So if you're already doing it and spending your time doing it, create a little nice flyer and highlighting the flipping company so they get exposure, which is what is important to them, and say, hey, this is the company that bought it. They, have, they buy houses for cash. If you know anybody that's selling, let us know. They'll be able to you know, make it easy for the seller. By the way, if you hear noise, call me. We'll make sure that everything gets taken care of. And then you put the other two items in there. If you know anyone that's looking to buy, let me know. If you're looking, if you know anybody that's looking to sell, tell them to maybe wait. And if they want to get in touch with me, I'm more than happy to help them. Right. So I would leave, I would put all those points in the flyer and I would leave that behind. Right. If they don't open the door. Um, anyway, so that would be at the very easiest way on how you can start leveraging investor product and, and, and make a very non threatening way of door knocking. I love that. That's really cool. It makes me want to go on door knock again. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Matt, are you still here or did you just disappear? I see you on the list, but all right, well, I'll go ahead. All right, so I got a, I got a bunch of things to talk about um, on this subject. But first, I want to go back to somebody. I don't know who said it. I think it was Dave. Uh, practicing is the most important part of this gig, right? I mean, you can sit here and hear what we're saying and all that. Stuff. So I'm going to do a little visual for you. Let me... Uh, I'm going to take off my camera real quick because, you know, I like to be visual on stuff. And so, as you all know, I play guitar, right? And so when I first started playing guitar through my fingers, to make a C chord went like this. And I would do this in front of a thousand people at a time when I used to do trainings. And, it, and then it would sound something like this. And then finally, eventually, I got a chord, but I couldn't write a song just... I couldn't play too many songs just with one chord, so then I had to learn another chord, right? So I had to learn a G chord. It took me a while to get the fingering, and then he had to go back and forth between the two. And, th and then all of a sudden, he woke up one day and go, right? So my point is, nobody gets good at anything unless you practice. If you don't practice, it's just a waste of time. All right, so that's number one. Uh, next thing, and I'll reiterate what people have said here, is you got to practice. You got to do this with a purpose. So uh, the few things that I've done in the past, it's been years now, but uh, I would go down. I always made my all of my marketing, whether it's follow up marketing, is a is a, a market update for the area. I think that's the most. Every time I've ever gone in appointments, well, so and so sends us a market update every month. We like her. I heard that a million times. <clears throat> so do it with a purpose. So you knock on the door. Hey, I want. I don't know if you know, but uh, five 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 Main Street just went under contract. And by the way, you don't have to have anything to do with that sale. All I'm saying is five 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 went under contract, and it was listed for five hundred thousand dollars. So if you know someone looking to buy a sell home, we have buyers in the buyers. There's lots of buyers looking in this area, right? Not saying I have a buyer. I'm just saying there's lots of buyers looking in this area. And by the way, here's the market update for this neighborhood: is the actives, the contingents, the souls. So I do it with a purpose. That, number one, the open house one I won't touch on again because somebody did, but I used to do it all the time. I did a private open house. So if I was doing 10 to 4 for my open houses, I would do 9 to 10 for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. yeah. The majority of my listings came from that in, in my first couple of years. I got eight listings in my first two years. All came from doing that, door knocking, having them come to my open house, and all we're thinking about selling. Uh, for sale by owners. I So 
and I think Dave said this again, you got to be different. So I don't have too many superpowers except my extremely good looks. Um, and the the superpower I have though is looking at businesses differently. It's how I became the first online dating service. It's how I became the first guy doing forced registration on the internet leads for real estate, ISAs, all the crap that I've done. Fizbo's was no different. I, all I read about Fizbo's, pick up the phone and call, call them. Well, I knew if I was on the other end, I'd, get, I'd be yelling at you for calling me for being the 50th person to call me. So what I do for Fizbo's is when I drive around, I always kept these in my in my car, uh, seller's disclosures. I knock on the door and I say, before you say, hey, my name is Mitch with Tropical Realty back then, EXP now. Uh, before you say anything, I don't want to list your house. It's called breaking the pattern. And it disarms them immediately, right? Because they've had a million people call them and tell them how wonderful they are and they're the best realtor in the country. They all say the exact same script, right? I say, I just want to make sure you're protected. Do you have a seller's disclosure? Nobody ever, ever, ever once, and I've done this a hundred times, has ever had a seller's disclosure. So I want to, so you print out a generic seller's disclosure. You can't use a, a, a NAR or a, or a state one because it's legally copywritten. So nobody's going to catch you, but I always print it out a generic one. I said, here, here it is. Here's the seller's disclosure. If anybody's interested in your house, make sure you give that to them. Because if you don't, you're liable for up to five years after you sell the house for anything that goes around this house that you didn't disclose. And they're like, wow, what does that mean? I go, and I go through the whole process. Anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole FISBO process because the process, but I had a 75% close rate on FISBOs, right? Didn't close them the first day, ever. I didn't try to, but, but within a week or two, always. And so we'll, we'll do another class on FISBOs and expires. But same thing with expires. Uh, I think Tracy said it. I've done a lot of expires over the years, but I never picked up the phone once. I wait, and I learned this from a friend of mine, I waited until they were expired for two months or longer and not relisted, and then just knock on the door. You know, I saw it a couple months ago, you were trying to sell your house, and um, you know, I wonder why you think it didn't sell. And they inevitably tell me, well, the realtor sucked, because that's what they always say. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and again, once I get in front of them and have a conversation, you're going to love me, because how can you not? And, and eventually, I get the listing from those. So... Those are a couple of the ways that I do it, but you always have to do it with a purpose. You always have to think differently. If you're calling like everybody else is calling and using the exact same script, you're gonna get the same results. Uh, nobody wants to be harassed. And that's why they take it out the market for a couple of months, by the way, because it's so sick of realtors by the time two days, within 48 hours of them going expired, they've heard from 150 realtors or they've gotten 150 letters or both. And, and I will tell you, I had a for sale by owner when I got in the real estate business. I was selling the house I live in now because I didn't really need it. And um, I did the for sale by owner. As soon as I got on the market, as soon as I got my license, I put it on the market in the MLS and I rented it a week later and kept it. I get so many letters and phone calls that people didn't know I owned the property because it hadn't switched in the tax rolls yet, telling me how much we don't know who this bitch guy is, but he must suck because we don't know who he is. And Tropical Realty is probably the worst company. I mean, literally. I, knowing what I know now, I would have called them all and beat the living crap out of them because it's so against the rules. But um, as a consumer doing that, I was so fed up with realtors. I lost so much respect for realtors. So do it the right way and do it with the heart and always with the conscience. I'm going to help people grow, the, you know, sell their home. Um, and don't talk about yourself. Nobody cares. Don't say I'm this and I'm that. And like, they don't give a shit. I mean, they no. just don't care how many homes you sell. They don't care. You got to break the ice and talk about it as a human being. You know, they like you as a human being, you'll be fine. All right, you'll do fine. Uh, all right, Matt, let's go to Matt. Hey, guys. Sorry, I've been on and off call. So, um, you know, door knocking, one thing I'll say about it is, it, and you guys have made, mentioned this when I wasn't uh, here, but you got to be consistent. You can't just go through a neighborhood one time and never go back there again. So I actually used to own a door-to-door -door sales company years ago. And um, I can tell you that it all comes down to consistency. Yes, you are going to occasionally run into somebody that says, actually, we are thinking of selling our home. We're in the middle, you know, we're about to get divorced or we're got a job transfer or whatever. But normally it's like it's like doing one set, you know, one one thing of direct mail to a community and then never doing it again. You're never going to get any, hardly ever going to get anything from that. So you just have to be consistent. I agree that handing out uh, market updates you know, this is what's sold recently. This is what's on the market. This is what's pending um, is the best thing to do it. Um, I used to like to do it in the afternoons. Um, for for real estate, we would we would a lot of times do it between three and six. Um, 
again, you you have to be consistent, though, is the main thing. There's a guy here in San Diego who I've known for years. His name is Richard Stone, and he has door knocked in Carmel Valley, which is a really hot area, for 30 years. He goes out five days a week. It's all he's ever done. You'll hardly ever see a, a mailer from him. All he does is goes out every single day and knocks on doors all over Carmel Valley. And he doesn't, by the way, he does not even not he doesn't knock on the door. What he does is he literally just drops off a flyer on their doorstep. But he's been doing it for so long and people see him. They see him walking around. He's wearing a tie, you know. Um, and so they know Richard's the guy. He's always coming around here. He's always dropping stuff off. It's a free thing to do, even if you just pick you know, a handful of neighborhoods and you do that consistently, you will get a return because, you know, like we always say, everything, if you do, it works to a degree. What doesn't work is doing nothing. Everything works and nothing doesn't. So it is, you know, and the other thing is people will be much, much friendlier to you at the door, believe it or not, than they will over the phone. Big, big difference. You think it'd be the other way around. They get so upset with you calling them, but when you knock on the door, they're actually nice. So and remember, when you're at the door, you're always on stage, so you always want to be smiling. It's an opportunity to build rapport with people, people work with people that they like. Um, but it's just all about consistency, and it's great exercise. So. Yeah, and, and that, that's so true. And, 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 and I know we, we all kind of hop on that a little bit, but consistency is everything. And I don't care what you're doing. If you're not doing it regularly, if I was doing door knocking, I'd be out there once a month. Uh, with a market update, hey, just deliver my market update for the month, and you know, and, and keep it really simple. Uh, walk the neighborhoods with your dog if you have a dog, right? You don't have to door knock; just walk around because people will come talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing what you can do to own a neighborhood. We'll, we'll go do a class on that soon uh, uh, on just owning neighborhoods. I actually have a seminar we're doing on uh, Wednesday here locally in Melbourne, uh, on Cocoa Beach, on on owning neighborhoods because I think it's really important to understand that. If you're consistent enough in the neighborhood, you you will own the neighborhood. You can truly become a neighborhood, the, the neighborhood realtor. And that's like the message that we all want to become. Right? I know, Matt, you've done a great job of that out there with the neighborhoods that you control. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we got about six more minutes here. Anybody else want to throw anything else in there? Uh, Kim, you always have extra things to throw in when you start thinking, so go ahead. <laughs> I do. I have one more that I missed out on, and this is a really big nugget, you guys. If you use your CRM, so it doesn't matter if you're, I don't know, you know, everyone's using different CRMs, but check and see if your CRM has a door knocking feature. I know that Lofty, one of our partners here at EXP, they have a door knocking feature which allows you to do a lot what I think you were saying earlier where it gets the name and info and that kind of stuff. But the bigger thing I have found is it allows me to keep notes directly in my CRM. So if I actually talk to someone at the door, I walk away from the door. I can put notes in my phone. It automatically goes in the CRM. So that's a big one, you guys. If you're going to do it, make sure that you're you know taking notes. And if your if your CRM has a door knocking feature, use it. Yeah, great. Hey, go ahead, Chase. Yep, you're on mute. There we go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to you know because I know I have a couple of my mentees um, listening today, and I just really want to tell everybody, you know what? You've just got to have confidence and have like no fear and know who you're talking to, you know, pick up on their style. I, um, I was determined to get a, I did, um, I used my uh, Vortex yesterday doing expireds and I spoke to a woman from originally from New York and she was just going and going and going and, and I just let her talk and talk and talk. And she says, I'm tired of all these phone calls, blah, 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 blah. I've got to be here. I've got to be there. I said, you know, I know that your greatest luxury is your time. But you will not be disappointed if you can squeeze me in today. I went there yesterday, got the listing. She was on the fence with somebody else. But my key is she says, you know what? You knew how to handle me. You know what I mean? And so just be confident. If you don't know the answer, say, you know what? I will have that for you when I come and see you at 4 o'clock. Okay? Because what's going to happen is somebody is going to call that same person after you got scared. And then you're going to see a for sale sign in that yard. And you know what? You just have to go out there and just be confident um, because we can all do it. So find there's so many methods we just all shared. I mean, so there's got to be one that I, Mitch, I even like yours. You know what I mean? Once a month, just, hey, hi, you got to be the mayor of the neighborhood that you want to dominate. And the second thing I want to say is don't worry about who dominates. 
the lady I spoke with yesterday, she didn't want to work with the hottest agent in their neighborhood. She couldn't stand them. She thought they were so pushy, like, like they were owed that listing. So don't let that throw you off too, but just have your elevator pitch ready. What's your value add? And just go out there and just, I'm telling you, once you get the first one, you'll be like, I can keep doing this. I can keep doing this. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> no, that's great. And, and you brought up a really good point, Tracy, which is, I, cause I hear it a lot from our agents and I you know, have a lot of agents here locally, 150 or so. Um, and they're like, well, so-and-so owns the neighborhood. Nobody owns anything. And people are always looking for the next hottest working person. There's one thing I've learned, you know, I've been studying real estate now. I've been doing real estate for 23 years, but I've been studying real estate for the last three years. And I'm not talking about um, more so the successful people, but more so the unsuccessful people. And Chase, you hit it right on the head with, when it comes to confidence. I remember I was driving to my first open house on my fifth day in real estate, no training at all, no idea what to do. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I remember sitting there going, well, you know, I've seen, I've seen these uh, realtors on TV. I'll just pretend I'm a realtor. And I went in there and I just acted like a realtor. I showed them the houses, talked about what was in the MLS sheet. I sold my first house my, first day, my fifth day in the, in the business. Um, and I just found that if your confidence level is there, this is a really easy business. But with that said, especially if they're from New York, because we all know how New Yorkers are, especially now Chris is off the call, I can say that, um, is they will eat you up alive if you don't show confidence. So one of my favorite lines is be uncomfortable with comfortable. If you're not comfortable doing something, then you need to go do it. Because once you break that barrier, that that uh, that comfort barrier to uncomfortable, you're gonna it's gonna change your life. And that's how I've excelled everywhere. I mean, you know, the only thing I have is humor. I'm pretty funny sometimes. And, and I can talk to anybody in the world. But no matter what, no matter how scared I am, I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to get beat up and I'm going to learn from every one of those mistakes. But I guess you within a day of doing that, I'm going to be the best door knocker, the best cold call, the best whatever I want to be because I'm confident. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Yeah. Anything else anybody want to throw in before we hop off? Yeah, I, I'll just add in this. Like, so the example I gave, you know, think about, you know, you do that first one when the property was just purchased, but then you go back to the same people and inviting them to that uh, neighborhood only open house for the same people you just told them a month ago about the property, right? So it's it's kind of what everybody's talking about. Find another, a different angle of approaching. So it's different than what everybody else is doing, right? And, and the truth is when people start seeing what you do for this in particular property owner, in this case, let's say it's an investor, if you're doing what I'm telling you, that's what they, they watch you. And they're like, wow, if this guy is hustling like this and he's come to me two, three times in a span of two months of this owner owning this property, I want that for me, yep. right? Because they're watching you. They might not tell you anything. They might not call you back for the first two door knocks. And then the next time you know, next thing you know, you get a phone call from them three months down the road because you did that activity three months ago and they were impressed and they were watching you and you never talked to them, but you dropped off the flyer, you dropped off the second flyer. Maybe they even popped into that open house and didn't even introduce themselves to you. You don't even know, but they watch you. And the next thing you know, you get that phone call and you're like, huh, that's how it works. This the You're just planting seeds. That's kind of how you got to think about it. And you never know where the fruit is going to come from. But if you don't do anything, like you hear from here, there's no seeds planted. Don't expect fruit. So let's end on that. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And, I, and I'm going to end on one more thing real quickly. I have two minutes and, and, uh, and I can. There's only one reason why people will use you as a realtor. Just one. It's because you happen to be in front of them when they're thinking about buying or selling. That's it. I mean, I've looked at everything here and, well, my customers love me. They're loyal. No, they're not. I've sold a thousand homes, 950 different customers. I can tell you five that will, I know will call me if they have to buy or sell a home. Out of a thousand, five. So the reality is if you're not doing anything, whatever you're doing consistently, you're not in front of them when they think about buying or selling. Um, guys, thanks for the panel today. Great job. Everybody's good. Uh, I didn't know we could talk that much about door knocking, right? Uh, have an awesome week, guys. We'll see you guys all next week. Okay, thanks, guys.
Have a good one. Bye.